Good evening, welcome to QUT Web News. Queensland Police are working with at least two banks investigating thousands of incidents of debit card skimming on Brisbane's north side. It's understood at least 5,000 cards were cancelled after the fraudulent behaviour was discovered. Both the Commonwealth Bank and Credit Union Australia have confirmed that 5,000 cards have been cancelled because of card skimming. Queensland Police are currently working with the banks to investigate the card fraud. Brisbane business owner Christina Cohen is a victim of another form of credit card fraud. A customer asked a staff member to put through a transaction manually, saying he'd left his card at home. A couple of weeks later, her bank notified her the transaction was fraudulent. It was once that happened that we then got contacted by the police who said this had been a fraud and then had to obviously provide. We had luckily had CCTV footage um, that we could provide them. Although this type of credit card fraud is common, the fact is that most cases in Australia actually occur from outside the country's border. The head of the Fraud and Corporate Crime Group, Brian Hay, says the internet is the main vehicle for card fraud and that it's not a matter of if your card will be compromised, it's a matter of when. One cardholder was surprised to find his bank had cancelled his account after someone in the US tried to access it after he'd used it online. Hopefully it won't happen again and I guess the precaution for me now is just not to use my Visa debit card online. Banks and police are warning customers to check their statements regularly and to notify their bank immediately about any suspicious activity. Amity Newman, QUT News. Brisbane's waterways have been given a better than expected health rating despite the destruction of the January floods. The good news came in the annual report card today, providing information on Queensland's waterways. After an intensive 12-month ecosystem health monitoring program, Brisbane's waterways and Moreton Bay were graded on an A to F scale. The freshwater regions improved in many cases due to heavy rainfall throughout the year leading up to the floods. And so those rivers were actually in pretty good shape. They'd been flushed. There are a lot of species had actually um, were found there that, that you won't normally find if they dry out. So the freshwater parts of the system actually did quite well over the year. The Queensland Government says the result is a bit of a surprise. The actions we've undertaken uh, to help keep our waterways as clean as possible are just the beginning. Uh, we need to keep going but uh, I'm actually relieved that the report card is not as bad as perhaps was anticipated. The report wasn't so good for Moreton Bay which has been downgraded from a C to a C minus. I would suspect that we will see a slow recovery in the bay. What we have in the bay now is that the water quality in some measures has improved but we have a lot more mud in the bay. So the area of mud has, a, has approximately doubled from 50 square kilometres to 100 square kilometres. But the wet season started all over again. Yesterday, North Queensland had its wettest day in 47 years. And the heavy rainfall is set to continue up north through to the weekend. Vivian Von Drainen, QUT News. Despite the January floods, tourism in Queensland is looking to make a comeback. Tourism Minister Jan Jarrett this morning announced a $4 million boost for the industry. Vitamin Me is the slogan for the campaign. It promises a remedy for the pressures of daily life, a holiday in Queensland. The minister hopes the new plan will boost tourism, which suffered after the floods. CEO of Tourism Queensland, Anthony Hayes, says this campaign should reignite the industry. We found that last summer a lot of, uh, a lot of the people that disappeared because of the, the floods and cyclones were the interstate market. The Vitamin Me campaign hopes to increase the number of domestic and interstate tourists in Queensland. The Australian dollar could still affect the number of international tourists this year, another reason this campaign is being directed at locals. The Tourism Minister says Australians have accumulated more than 123 million days of annual leave and are overdue for a break. What we're encouraging everyone to do this summer is to get out uh, into Queensland, uh, perhaps somewhere local or somewhere new. Despite the rough start to the year, Mr Hayes says the future looks promising. We're going to celebrate summer, we're going to celebrate the rebirth of the Queensland tourism industry because we know we're in for a great year ahead. Naomi Lynch, QUT News. Queensland property developer Keith Williams has died in a Gold Coast hospital at the age of 82. Mr Williams was a multi-millionaire who made his fortune from tourism. He built the SeaWorld theme park and established resorts on a number of Whitsunday's islands. Mr Williams suffered a series of strokes this week and has been battling poor health for several years. 
Queen Elizabeth is due to arrive in Canberra tonight for her 16th official visit to Australia. The Queen and Prince Philip will be in Brisbane next week, but to the surprise of many, this tour will not include Sydney. The Queen will be met at Canberra's Fairburn Airport by Prime Minister Julia Gillard, Governor-General Quentin Bryce and local school children. My mum talked to my grappy last night and apparently we need to curtsy and bow. The 85-year-old monarch will be taking time for both official and public engagements during her stay. The royal couple will cruise Lake Burley Griffin and visit the Australian War Memorial and the Floriad Flower Festival in our capital. Yeah, it's an ongoing uh, reminder. Um, you know, just the, the importance of the Queen to us here and it just emphasises the national nature of Canberra. Although the Queen officially inaugurated the Captain Cook Memorial Jet 40 years ago, the National Capital Authority will only allow the Lake Burley Griffin landmark to be running for two hours because of cost. Her public reception is expected to be modest compared with her 1954 visit when an estimated 70% of the population turned out to offer my best wishes to all those who will be giving their service to the nation within these walls. Queen Elizabeth will come to Brisbane on Monday and leaves for Melbourne two days later. Her final destination is Perth, where she will open the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting and she leaves for the UK on October 29. Kate Morrison, QT News. A Brisbane video game studio has highlighted an industry trend to move from higher niche market games to cheaper casual games. Half Brick Studios is globally recognised for one of its iPhone games, which is now being developed for a number of other gaming platforms. The Australian game development industry has been suffering, with seven high-profile studios closing in the past six years. It's led to a significant shift in the types of games produced, with Brisbane company Half Brick Studios leading the way. They've taken advantage of the real boom of more popular mobile games as they appeal to a much broader demographic. In its traditional sense, it, was, it had a very hardcore audience. Um, now, its popularity is exploding mostly in a more of a casual market. With the huge success of their iPhone app Fruit Ninja, Half Brick Studios are now one of the most well-known independent game developers in the world. They've now even branched out from mobile applications with the launch of their Fruit Ninja for Xbox Connect game and a free Facebook version of the game coming soon. Despite the success of Half Brick Studios, employment in the video game development industry is very volatile, with only the top 5% of products making profit. It is definitely a growing, uh, growing industry, but in Australia, unfortunately, it's been a shrinking industry for about the last three to five years. Meanwhile, the popularity of professional gaming is also growing, with big money and prizes up for grabs. As far as esports goes, I believe that is growing rapidly as well. In Korea, we already have people that are uh, professional gamers that are paid $200,000 a year just to play the game. Rachel Riley, QUT News. To sports news now, and Gold Coast United coach Miron Blyberg says his team is on a mission to end Brisbane Raw's unbeaten winning streak in the A-League. The Raw have won their last 29 matches and will face United at Suncorp Stadium in Friday night's M1 derby. Miron Blyberg says unlike other rivals, United won't fall into the trap of trying to change their game plan to beat the Raw. The last time the two teams played, the Raw thrashed United 4-0, though on that occasion the Gold Coast were missing a host of key players. Blyberg is confident his team's preparation during the off-season is capable of beating the Raw. Raw coach Ange Postacoglu said he knew his team would eventually be beaten, but was confident it wouldn't be this week. To cycling, and Australia's Cadell Evans says next year's Tour de France course is likely to suit him even more than this year's edition. Evans won the Tour in July and was in Paris last night, where the course featuring fewer mountain stages and a longer time trial was unveiled. Oh, it's of course like every year it takes an all-round rider and you, you need to be good certainly um, certainly for the first first half and yeah, of course yeah, with the time trial and the mountain stages. Finally, to boxing now and Anthony Mundine will face off against Mexican Rigoberto Alvarez in Newcastle tonight. A win will give the outspoken 36-year-old the right to face American Austin Trout for the WBA junior middleweight title. Cameron Robinson, QUT News. Time now for a look at the weather. Over the next three days, Brisbane may get a shower or two, but it should be fine on Friday and Saturday 
with a top of 26 degrees. Looking further ahead, fine conditions are here to stay for the rest of the week with warm weather in the high 20s through until Tuesday. That brings you up to date with the weather. And that's all the news we have for you now. We'll be back tomorrow with more QUT News. Goodbye. Goodbye.